Hello everybody, it's Andy here from AMED Games. Um, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to set up a simple level cutscene the easiest way possible. So without further ado, let me jump in and I'll show you how it's done. So you can see here in front of me I have my temple scene set up. This is my own personal project and my own level game that I am currently working on. Um, so I'm doing this completely solo. There's a lot of things going into this game. Uh, high expectations, it's going to take me quite a while but yeah, I'm happy with it so far. So what you do, I'm just gonna trigger one and show you what I mean by the cutscene first. So I'm gonna show up for a second and just walk forwards. Okay, so a simple cutscene, it could be a pan to a point of interest. It could be you've picked up a key and maybe you want the camera to to slowly or dramatically pan to a door that's just been unlocked. Maybe you've just released the beast and the demon's coming out of the basement, so you want to pan the camera to the basement door. I don't know what you're going to use it for, but there's just some ideas. So, to do this, it's very simple. The first thing we're going to do is come out of the game, because obviously we don't need to be in it to show you. And I'm going to delete everything that I've made for the third time because the first time the audio corrupted, the second time I forgot to press record, and this is the third time. So, let's do it again, shall we? Okay, so delete everything there, and then we're gonna go into our level blueprint. I'm gonna delete everything there, compile it, and then in our level, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a level sequence, add level sequence. This is gonna be camera, pan, cut, scene, uh, tutorial. Third time's a charm, right? Okay, so let me just check. I am recording and the audio is on. Okay, so we're going to create a level sequence. So I'm just going to click up here, add level sequence, and then give it a name. Okay, ignore that name. I was just having a bad day. So um, in here, we're going to add a camera. So we're going to go into the game play. I'm going to aim my camera at the point of interest which is in front of me. I'm going to come out of the game so now that my camera is facing the direction I want to go in. We're going to go to, let's move this out of the way for a second, we're going to go to the top left side of our screen just here and we're going to go and create camera here, camera actor. Now we can put this back and we can see here now we have a new camera actor. If we move out of the way, you can see here we have our camera and our picture in picture, our little pip display down here, which shows us the view of the camera, which is pointing currently at that point of interest at the end of this corridor. So we're going to click on our camera, go to track, actor to sequence, and then we can see here at the top we have our camera actor. Next thing we want to do is we've just taken over the camera automatically when we created that. So we're going to click on the eject button. So now we're no longer controlling that camera with our mouse. We just want to see it. So we're going to select our camera. Make sure you add it to the track, which we've done. So add track. And then click the transform button just down the bottom. Let's bring that out a little bit. There we go. So click on the transform button. We'll get this little drop down menu and we can delete scale. So select scale, press delete. If we open our rotation and our location, we can see here we have current um, global position or our world relative position. And this is all of that data here. So if we click on the camera, we can see here location and rotation. This is the data that it's currently transmitting over to our level sequencer. We're gonna click on our transform and click on the plus button between the two small arrows to the right of transform. So click once here. Make sure you turn on auto key. We're gonna click where it says 30 FPS. Go down to the bottom. Show time as, and make sure it's in seconds. Yours might be defaulted to frames. Just change that to seconds. It's a lot easier to understand when it's not frames and it is in seconds. Just makes it a hell of a lot more easier. Now that we have our base key values in, so this is our current rotation, uh, location and our current rotation, now that we have those in and we have auto key, if we select our camera, move our timeline to five, we can do it this way or click here and type in five. We can then move our camera 
to the location we want it to be in, just like so, uh, all the way to here. And now because we have auto key on, our any when it detects any adjustment in the location of these values, it will automatically add a key to the position that you've moved it to up here. And then if we pan this backwards, we can see on the right side here that it's gonna be moving that camera. So we've now animated the camera, it's following a spline path, and that camera is now animated. So when we play that sequence, it will move the camera along this path, slowly panning towards the point of interest. We're going to click save and we're going to close that and then we're going to add a trigger so let's go to add to scene go to trigger if you can't find it here just go to all classes and type in trig and then drag and drop trigger into the level move it into position stretch it across just like so <clears throat> now we have our trigger and we have our camera so we're going to go to our level C, uh, level blueprint we're going to click here list of world blueprints and then click on open level blueprint <clears throat> in here I'm not going to show what I've got up here because I'm working on some puzzles um, and I don't really want to uh, spoil the game too early and give things away because I'd have to change the puzzles uh, there's no point giving away the answers it's like uh, giving away the answers to a test before you arrive, right? So, I'm going to right click. Excuse me. I'm going to right click, go to add event, go to collision, add on actor begin overlap. <clears throat> zoom in, a little handy tip. If you zoom in all the way and then hold control, you can zoom in some more. Not a lot of people know that, but there's one for you. Um, so zoom in with the mouse wheel and it will stop at one point hold control and you can zoom in a bit more so we're going to get a do once node hold O for Oscar and left click and then we're going to connect these two up so this is going to detect our player this is going to only allow the code to fire once so imagine this is like a, a fuse so when the player walks through this fuse will light and they've got to follow the path and it will only allow the code to fire off once if your player walks back over it it will then be a closed gate in a sense and then you can it will kind of block it here so the code will never be able to fire again the only way you can is if you use some kind of a reset value so what we're going to do now in our level is click on our level sequencer so we're going to type in seq and we're going to get our camera pan cutscene I'm going to move that into view so we can find it just here and then click on our level blueprint so if you remember that where that is it's just here level blueprint <clears throat> and then we're going to right click make sure that the level sequencer is selected in in the level go to level uh, level blueprint level blueprint right click create a reference and then drag out of here and then click out type in play once you've typed in play go to play sequence player just like so connect that in there drag across all three press Q to straighten them do the same here Q to straighten them so then when the player walks over it's gonna trigger this once and it's gonna play this level sequencer that we just created compile it go into the level and now if I go into the game play and I move backwards, so you'll hear the player cough. It's not me for once. <coughs> and then, <clears throat> nearly. So, I'll let these lights light up. So, in around about this location, this this the camera is about here. And if I walk forwards, it will trigger that sequence, and the pat the camera will pan forwards across the level, just like so. To the point of interest, which is the the goblet there. Um, so that's how you create a really simple, really easy to follow um, level sequencer there for your cameras. It's a really good way to kind of set up um, point of interest cameras panning across. Maybe you have like a, I don't know, a basement and when the player does a specific action, the basement door busts open and out comes, I don't know, Satan, I don't know, whatever. 
or you pick up a key and it unlocks a specific door and then the camera pans to that door to show the player or a bit of direction of where they kind of need to go so but um i mean you can you don't have to just do a straight line um if i click on the sequence uh, uh sorry the camera you can you could move this forward and then also like rotate and pan the camera around back at the player or something you, you don't just have to do a straight line you can do any direction any movement you, that you want to do um but yeah so i hope that helps if you like the video like it i'm not too sure why you would dislike it it's free information it's just help but if you like it like it um if you dislike it then so be it dislike it but you know help me out by subscribing i appreciate everybody that has so far